Hello, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and welcome to a brand new series here. And what we're going to do is focus on open source game development. That is, uh, tools and uh, frameworks and game engines, etc. The common theme being that they are open source and available. And I think the proper way to start this off is probably by doing a bit of an overview of some of the most popular open source licenses. Possibly not the most uh, interesting subject you've ever seen, but definitely one that has some value. And those licenses that we're going to look at today specifically are the MIT license, the GPL, LGPL license, the Apache license, the Zlib license, and the Creative Commons license. And we're going to use a site called TLDR Eagles quick basically English blurbo uh, to describe each of those licenses in term. Now I'm only scratching the surface of open source licenses that are available, but these are by far and away the most commonly used ones. So if you download a framework that's open source, uh, chances are it is under one of these particular licenses. So let's start them off in order. First off, we're looking at MIT license. Now MIT license is one of the most liberal ones you can find. Uh, from the TLDR legal definition, it is a short permissive software license. Basically you can do whatever you want as long as you include the original copyright and license notice in any copy of the software source. There are many variations of this license in use. Now that description pretty much sums it up. MIT license, as far as being an end user, is probably my personal favorite license. Basically it is do as you wish, be sure to include the original copyright and original license and you are good to go. So basically if you see an MIT license product and you want to use it commercially, you're good to go. If you want to use it for just about anything, you are good to go. Um, uh, so if you see MIT license, just sit there and go, yep, this is a good license for me. And if you want to release your game or your code or your tool very liberally open source wise, MIT license is definitely one to consider. Uh, next up is probably a bit more controversial one. It's a pair of licenses called GPL or the GNU Public License and LGPL. Now these probably came to most fame for being behind some of the most famous open source software out there. Um, the uh, Software Freedom Foundation or the Freedom Software Foundation, one of those two things, basically Richard Stallman's organization and one of the major backers behind like uh, Emacs, Linux, uh, all these earlier major key open source projects started off as LGPL or GPL. Now one of the problems with uh, GPL specifically is it's an effective license. Basically so if your product is derived from a GPL or an LGPL product, you in turn need to use that license. And this is a very restrictive license. Now if you're a very pro open source person and you want all derived works from your project to continue to be open source, GPL and LGPL are your way to go. Now LGPL or lesser GPL is probably the more liberal of the two and that's not saying much because this is still one of the most restrictive open source licenses you're going to find here. But let's go through the description. So basically this license is mainly applied to libraries. You may copy, distribute, and modify software provided that modifications are described and licensed for free under the LGPL. So basically your derived work also needs to be LGPL. Derivative works, including modifications or anything statically linked to the library, can only be redistributed under LGPL, but applications that use the library do not have to be. That is to say, any changes that you in turn make to the code need to be LGPL, but you can make a commercial project using LGPL code. This is where GPL and LGPL stay, uh, they start to differ. Now, one of the most commonly licensed under this guy is the Blender open source project. So again, if you're strong into making your code remain open source, LGPL is a good one to lease, release under, but it does make commercial products a little bit more challenging, especially when you start getting into the uh, modification or static linking. You start get into this weird static linking is, uh, let's see, is that good or no, bad, but dynamic linking is it okay? So there's some ways to skirt around this license and um, have extensibility or make commercial project built on top of this code. Uh, but it is one that's more fraught with legal issues and con um, definite complexities. It's not really one of my personal favorites, uh, but then again, I'm not in open source communities. I'm not really zealous about it and I can understand the reasons for it existing. Now, next up, we are going to look at the Apache license. Now the Apache license came about because of the Apache uh, web server is like it was released under and the description says it all permissive BSD or Berkeley system something or other uh, clause style license with restrictions on trademark use and the requirement of including this product includes software developed by the Apache group for use in the Apache HTTP server project um, in reality it's a whole lot like the MIT license it's a very liberal license uh, you defer any liabilities you can um, 
you can't trademark um, the product that you've used. Uh, so if you use, for example, the Apache server, you can't change it and trade out the um, change out the the trademark, or you can't use the name Apache in your derived project. Again, we're starting to get into the legal definition terms, uh, but it does allow you to use commercial use to change out the license, to modify the license, to redistribute. Um, but you have to include copyright and you have to include the license in it. Um, so I think it is basically a slightly more rights retained MIT license equivalent. Uh, but again, that's one of those things to talk to your lawyer about. MIT is a little bit more liberal, uh, but the Apache license is considered to be one of the most liberal out there too. So basically, if you run into something that is Apache licensed, you're generally good to go in just about every way. Just don't mess with trademarks and do not... Um, change the copyright on the work that you're, so the code that you take down. If it has a copyright in it, leave the copyright in there. If you redistribute it, redistribute it with the copyright information. Now, another very liberal license is the uh, Zlib or LibPing libraries. It used to be just called the Zlib library. I think they just kind of merged those two together. It's often used for open source licensing um, for of software projects. So basically, if you create a library and you want to make it available open source for other people to use, that's where the Zlib uh, LibPing comes in. And this license is used for the Zlib library and some other open source library packages. It's very short and very permissive. It requires you to change the name of the modified software and contains a sentence removing liability from the authors of the software. So as far as uh, um, requirements go, that's about as simple as it gets. Basically, um, your derived product can't use the same name as the product you inherited from. So if you want to create Zlib2, you could do so. You would have to rename it. Um, so you can basically download the source code, change it however you want. You just can't rebrand it using their particular their names and you can't sue the developer of the original source they basically you, you have you, it's a use at your own risk type library again if something is licensed zlib um, from a legal perspective you could do almost whatever you want with it it's a very liberal license and again this one is very commonly used for um software uh, such as you know libraries etc that you embed in your code and the final one we're going to discuss today is creative commons now creative commons is actually a number of different licenses this this is the description for the creative commons cc0 and creative commons actually get kind of confusing so there's a bunch of them as i said so the description of the top level one are the creative commons universal licenses release software into public domain or otherwise grow permission to use it for any purpose disclaim patent licenses so basically you can't use a trademark can't hold them liable and you um uh, use patent claims. I'm not sure exactly what they mean on that one, but the reality is Creative Commons is more into the other licenses that are associated with it. So you've actually got um, Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial attribution, uh, share and share alike, uh, and such. Now, generally what you'll find Creative, uh, or and there's also CC BY, which is the Creative uh, attribution non-commercial and uh, creative attribution share alike. Yeah, uh, so basically the CC BY license is um, designed around actually sharing content for the most part. So that's normally where you will see uh, Creative Commons. Um, I believe Google Poly, oh, what the heck was it called? I just covered it the other day. But Google just released a whole bunch of 3D models into the world and the majority of them were licensed under the CC BY license. And here it kind of comes down to which particular one you're looking at. The attribution is um, you basically have to give credit to the original works, but you're basically able to do a lot with what you're given. Um, you've got other ones that are basically non-commercial, which basically means you can't sell the derived works. It all comes down to which Creative Commons license you actually get. But these are very common uh, licenses for releasing resources, things like 3D models, textures, um, somewhat, I guess, source code uh, that aren't full libraries. Um, you know, it's, it's sort of for, you know, redistributing assets and how you particularly want those assets to be redistributed kind of comes down to um, the particular one you, you choose. Now, the most common one that you're going to encounter out there is the CC attribution license, which basically says you can use this content legally. You just have to give credit. So if you grab, if you used, say, a, a model in your game that was under CC attribution license, you would have to, in your game credits, give you know, credits back to the original author as was attached to the license. It's generally a very liberal license and it's also a very fair one for artists to share their work by, which is why it's so commonly used these days. But there are multiple different versions in it that would require an entire video of its own, so I'm not gonna go down that road. Just be aware of it, most of the, part, most of the time, a CC um, license that is not non-commercial is pretty liberal in what it can do, but you generally have to attribute back to the original author of the materials. And obviously a non-commercial license, well, that's a different story altogether because then you have no rights to actually make money off of using that product on, 
in your actual product. And that's it for now. That's where we're gonna start. So basically, that's just a top level overview of some of the most popular open source licenses and what they bring to the table. Again, thanks to uh, TLDR Legal uh, for these descriptions. And if you wanna look up a bunch more open source licenses, that's a great site to go on. Um, and they kind of have a nice summary of what you can and can't do with each particular license, plus you know these quick descriptions like we went through today. Um, in later on in this series, we're gonna actually get down more in specifics into some of the best open source libraries, some of the best open source content creation tools. And you know what? I'd love your recommendations down below. So if you've got some tool you think I should be covering in this series, do let me know. If you're an open source developer and I've made a mistake on any of these license descriptions, again, I am not a lawyer, um, do let me know. We'll you know have a conversation about that down below. And are you interested in open source development or do you just like free? Because free and open source are not necessarily the same thing, um, but they often actually are as well. A lot of things are free and open source, but um, this is specifically on things that have the source code available so you can make modifications, you can make changes down the road. So there's a lot of power in you know hooking up your um, tech chain to open source technologies or using open source content, especially if you are not an artist or you are not a musician. There is a lot of appeal in using these community provided resources. Um, so if this is subject that interests you, do let me know and stay tuned. Like I said, we will get into more of the tools and the framework stuff uh, and you know going forward. But I thought we should have a good basis of you know what open source actually means and what some of the licenses are. Uh, if you enjoyed that, please do click the like button and uh, you know if this sounds good, you hit that subscribe button. We cover all kinds of things, even sometimes, you know, legally licensed stuff like this. Uh, and do let me know if you're interested in this series uh, going on and on. Uh, again, I'm going to cover at least game engines and game tools. Uh, we'll see where we go from there. Uh, hope you enjoyed that. I will see you all later. Goodbye.